So, um, I got this, this MG, um, is it Fei Fei Yu, Fei Yu, MG, um, 3-axis gimbal for Christmas for myself. Um, this basically carries a, pa a payload of up to like four pounds, um, and um, they, had, they had them on sale, I think um, V&H I got it from. So I couldn't pass it up. So I bought this thing and um, I've just started getting a chance to play around with it a little bit. Um, and I've been impressed and been really impressed thus far. Um, so the camera that I'm using on on it is just a, an NEX5, um, you know, kind of older mirrorless camera, nothing too fancy. Um, and not too hefty either. So um, this thing supposedly can take like a full body DSLR. So. Um, I was hopeful that you know maybe I could use this on there. I can make make a mount for my um, my phone, perhaps. You know, maybe even the um, like the GoPro session. You know, maybe that's a little optimistic. So as far as the setup goes, um, it it I, I just you know full full disclosure. I went ahead and uh, already walked through it, and um, the instructions they do seem to be a little bit like um, you know uh, someone took some Chinese and passed it through Google Translate. So I went ahead and just reset this back to factory settings. Um, basically on controls, you have a button, and then you have like a joystick here, which goes, you know, as the joystick does, all, all different directions. Um, it doesn't appear to be a button itself. And um, it's got a little heft to it, even, even empty. It, it, it's, um, I can see it fatigue in my hand holding it like this. Um, so you can turn it on when it's empty, or at least I think. Oh, you hear that noise? So that that's like that's like the same noise you get if it's um, well you know, as you'll see when I put my camera on it, you go at different angles. Um, so I was hopeful that I could just yeah. Well, no, actually, it's just this thing vibrating. But yeah, you get these like whacked out noises if it's not calibrated properly, right? So we'll turn that off. Yeah. And um, I'm calibrating it. And so, so the instructions, um, they, they walk you through this. So basically, the first thing that you do um, is adjust the, um, the tilt-in access, balance adjustment for the tilt-in access. And, um, and it was kind of weird because you first balance the, the center of gravity, and then you actually balance the tilt. And so what I, what I discovered or what I kind of figured, I, I, I take all this with a grain of salt, or a grain of sand, or whatever the saying is, because um, I, I could be wrong on, on all or any of this. But what I what I um, I discovered, I had to turn this thing around for my camera. It seemed that they wanted um, the the non grip side of the camera. Um, to be facing, to, to be mounted this way, right? And um, with with my camera, it just didn't fit right. So this base just slides out, and I was able to, to turn it around. You know, slides out this way, turn it around, slide it back in. Tighten up the screws at the bottom. Um, get it to the proper position on here. Um, so so anyway, they, they, they first want you to just attach this thing, this camera underneath. So without doing too much scraping up with my table here. Bring this thing under. You might have to adjust adjust your plate to get the, the camera to fit whatever camera you're mounted on here. And um, screwdriver might be helpful. These, these little you can't get too much grip on these little tang things that pop up here. But um, I like to just get it get it tight and then kind of center it. Um, so, so actually on this first one, you don't want it centered. You kind of let the ha camera hang off the front a little bit. And um, go ahead and tighten it down. Because the idea that they want you to do is, um, is let the camera, let the camera hang down. Like hold, hold, hold it, hold it like this, hor hold it horizontal. The roll, which roll is, is this, right? You got roll, you have um, tilt, and then pan. 
So again, you have roll, tilt, and pan. And so hold, hold the, the roll <laughs> horizontal and let the tilt just hang down. And the idea is you want this thing to hang pretty much straight. And I could never get mine to be straight. And I kind of chalked that up to the weight of my camera. I push this thing all the way forward and it's still kind of hanging down like that. The thing you're supposed to do is take and loosen this, loosen this knob here. And here, let me actually loosen that. And this thing slides here, right? And see, so the idea is, is like, see, see if it's if it's like that, it's not. And so I can push this up, and it's gonna bring that down, right? But what might be hard to see here is I was talking about the build quality earlier and the lack of wires. There is this wire. This is the one thing I don't really like about this gimbal and might be problematic, as I could see in the future, is these wires crimp as you push this down. And it gets to a point where if, if you crimp that too much and you turn this, it's actually going to be digging into that wire, right? So I went down all the way to the bottom and then came up just a little bit so I'm not like putting, putting pressure on that wire or digging into that wire with this knob and then tightened it down. And so with that, with my camera, I don't get that 90 degree that you're looking for. It's supposed to be like that. Mine's like that. So I was like, oh, I need to add weight. And, um, and at first, that's what I did. I went ahead and added some weight. Um, I think I just um, strapped my GoPro onto here as well, thinking, oh, I'll have two cameras. But that, that kind of sucks. And, and I was thinking, ah, oh, man, I might have to just return this thing because um, I, I don't want to buy a new camera. I'm, I'm happy with my, my little NEX. Um, so, so I thought, eh, what the hell, I'll continue through all the steps and just see what happens. So, so that, that's the first step, is you want to balance that thing. Um, the step two is to adjust um, the center of, balance, center of gravity for the camera, um, which basically you're going to push, you're going to push the camera back until the point where you can hold it and the camera is going to be, you know, horizontal as well, right? Um, balanced like that. So. That was a little easier to do. You just, you, know, you just take it, you slide it back a little bit, tighten it a little bit. It's enough to make it not move and see where you're at. Oh, it needs to go back just a little bit more. And so if you don't tighten it too much, you can just slide it back a little bit. A little bit more, it needs to come back. Slide it back. Perfect. Tilt it a little bit, see where it's at. See if you can just get it to sit right there. Um, and I, I, you know, I may be wrong, but it doesn't seem like it had to be perfect. So that seemed good enough. So that's why I just went ahead and hand tighten this. It does have a little um, like flat head, so you could use a screwdriver or something, but I wouldn't want to break anything by putting too much pressure on it. So um, I just used my fingers. I've already tightened these to slide the camera. You want the camera all the way slid up against this rubber on the side. And so mine's, mine's set there. And so now, go ahead and check it again. I did notice when, sometimes when I tighten that, it would shift the camera a little bit and it would you know, kind of go off to the side. But that's basically what you're looking for, or at least what I was looking for. And that's, that's step one, or that's the, um, yeah, step one, balancing the tilt. So, um, so that wasn't too bad. So from there, you need to balance the roll. Right? And so as we said before, roll is this way. And um, this was the problem that I had with this camera because it's so light. It's, it's, um, I didn't think it was going to be possible to balance the roll. And again, with balancing the roll, you have a knob here on this in between, on this motor that's in the center. And it loosens up and you can slide this thing, right? And so at one end, it's like, yeah, it's just going to hit. It's not going to balance at all. Um, so it wouldn't even be workable right there, right? But then slide it all the way. And again, notice that wire there. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see this wire right here. Um, if you go all the way, you crimp that, and you actually pinch it up against the metal. So, um, so I just went all the way and then came back a little bit. 
went all the way without pressing too hard and came back a little bit. So again, I don't want to damage that wire in any way, put stress on it. Again, my only complaint with the design of this thing. And then notice, like my camera, you're supposed to hold it like this and it's supposed to be level, like sits there level. My camera, adjusted all the way, is not gonna sit level. You know, it's just not gonna happen unless I put some lead out here to weight this down, right? And that, it, it's considerable weight. It's considerable weight that I have to put out there to balance this thing fully. So again, I was like, ah, man, you know, this just isn't gonna work. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna have to return this thing. And I thought, oh, you know, what harm? What harm could come from trying? So, um, so the next thing was balancing the adjustment for pan. So, um, so okay, so pan and access. We already said pan is this way, right? So you got pan, roll, tilt. For some reason, you know, I keep repeating this stuff, but for some reason that that, that was just the problem that I had in my head. It's like, what am I working with? And, uh, and in reading these instructions, it was just kind of, I, I got confused. It wasn't a simple walkthrough for me. Um, so for the pan and access, you basically, you take this stick and you hold it, you hold it like so, and you're supposed to get this thing to, to sit horizontal, to stick and stay. So notice mine goes back a little bit. So again, there's a knob here that you turn and it allows you to slide this thing. Again, there's a wire here that gets crimped if you slide it too far. So you probably don't want to slide it too far. And luckily, I was able to get mine in there. Get mine to the zone, right? Tighten it up without moving it. Which is, you know what, this thing's moving around too. So it probably helps to keep that camera you know, so in the forward position, right? which I probably had it adjusted already, but this is a good exercise and just from factory settings, which who knows where it's going to be. I didn't have any problem, I didn't have this much problem getting this level last time, so maybe it's because I have my hands held out here in front of this camera. So that's pretty good. That's what you're looking for, right? Just be able to hold it and have that thing sit pretty much horizontal to how you're holding it and not be flopping around or go this way or go that way, which you want to have the camera pointed forward because the lens might balance the balance off a little bit. So, um, so those were the steps. And then like they have a, a net, the step four which is camera adaptation parameter adjustment. It said, after finishing the stabilizer balance adjustment, turn on the gimbal for a testing. Please refer to point five in installation chapter. If there is slight variation happening, or if there is slight variation happen on the panning, rolling, tilting, access, after power of the gimbal, it means the adaption parameters need to be adjusted. And then it tells you, uh, you know, there's four steps to adjust each parameter and function buttons and adjusted accesses, axes. And I, I, that's where I was like, oh, please just work. Please just work. I don't want to have to do this. So this thing, at this point, I have this thing balanced, right? And um, so then, you know, hopefully I should just be able to turn this thing on and have it, like, go to town, right? And so um, I push that button there. You got to push it and hold it just a little bit. Lights come on, and all of a sudden this thing's going. And it's silent. So I was like, woohoo, it works, right? Then I go here and I feel a little bit and it, it like bumped out there. I felt a little bit of vibration. And then um, it kind of it goes into standby mode. That's the blue blinking light there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it's in standby mode. I'm like, ah, what happened there? And um, then I push it again. Now we're going. It seems to be working. Come down, getting vibration. There, look, hear that? I'm like, ah, uh, that sucks. You know, so that's that's in the tilt. You get to a certain point, and boom, I bump into that that tilt. And I come back up, and I'm still feeling vibration again in the tilt. Come over here, roll. There's vibration in the roll. 
on these axes. Did you see that? Kind of wobbly there. So I've got it in the roll. As expected, since I was able to balance, the, the pan seems fine, although it's hard to tell because I got some vibration going on. So that's when I turned it off. And I was like, ah. Notice it's blinking blue. It's in standby. If you want to turn it off, you just hold this thing down until that red light holds solid. And now it's off. So I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to adjust these parameters a little bit. So um so my main concern, like in the vibration right there, was was um, tilt, as I said. And so um took another look at this step four, the camera adaptation parameter. And it says basically that um, you know, after finishing, oh, I already read that. If there's a slight variation happens, blah, 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 you have to adjust the parameters. Um, so steps. After power on, you can adjust the adaptation parameter of the corresponding axis while operation of function corresponding keys, as shown below. The LED will keep flashing in the adjacent mode. If the pan and axis roll in, tilt in access from side to side, then move up the joystick to increase the adaptation parameter. The motor has fought, fell from feeling, the motor has felt the feeling of holding the handle, then move down the joystick to decrease the adaptation perimeter. After the shock rocker disappeared, please release button and click save function parameter. So, so I was like, yeah, whatever, what, 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 what's going on here? So at this point, there's joystick up down. I see the joystick. It goes up and down, right? And then it says function bu button. To ta tap the button five times to adjust the panning axis. Tap the button six times to adjust the rolling axis. Tap the button seven times to adjust the tilting axis. So tilting axis on mine is, is all beefed up. So I thought, OK, let's go ahead and um, adjust it. Press down to decrease, up to increase. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And there it goes. And then I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All of that sudden this thing starts beeping. So I'm like, aha, I did something, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna guess that I need to decrease this. So one, two, three, four, five. So I brought it down five times. And I already feel it. It actually feels a little bit better. So then I'll go down to this. I start feeling a little vibration, so let me decrease it a little bit more. One, two, three. I feel a little bit, but it's better, definitely. One, two. So that was ten, 10 clicks down, right? And now it feels great. It's just buttery smooth. So from there to there, right? So, so it looks like my tilt is fine, right? like the, my concerns with tilt. So then the other thing was like roll, right? So I had problems with roll. So I guess that to make this stick, I have to press this button maybe. So let me press the button and see if this light does anything. So I press the button, the light turns off. Whoa, so let's check. And I think I did it. Awesome, right? So it's not as easy. Um, it's the instructions that are really kind of getting in the way um, of appearing intimidating just because of the language. So for roll, I probably still have that. Yeah, there's a shutter there. I get about here. I start feeling a little bit of yeah, right there. There's some there's some noise in there that I feel. So I'm gonna guess that I need to turn it down, the motor down. So I'm gonna adjust the roll. To adjust the roll, I tap the button six times. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's that blue blinking light again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do. One, two, three, down. So if I come over, I get less slop there. I didn't get that like wavy motion. Less there. Let me come down two more. One, two. A little bit more slop. A lot of slop. So let me go up. One, two. A little slop. You know, it's it's not it's not that crazy. So I'm gonna just go with that. It feels smooth. It feels smooth. The slop there that you see, it, it I don't feel grinding on the motor or anything. And I'm I'm okay with that. It feels okay. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. So, and then as far as like like pan, pan, pan's great. It feels good, buttery smooth. So, I think I'm balanced, you know. So it wasn't that hard. Whoop, yep. <laughs> I thought I was balanced, but it um it appears that my tilt still has some desire. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the tilt down a little bit more. So that was again seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're gonna flash in blue light. So I'm gonna go down. One, two, three. Try that out. It was when I went past here. It started. Oh. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think I'm at the bottom because I, as I push, you know, there's no numbers that's showing me, but it doesn't appear to be helping any at this point. Like I get past this 90 degree, like 90 degree, it's buttery smooth, which for my use case, that's fine. You know, I'm cool with that because I'm very rarely going to want to get too far down because then this thing's going to get in the way of the lens, right? It just kind of defeats the whole purpose of having this thing. So, um, and again, pushing down on this, I can hold it down doesn't appear to change anything. So I think I'm like bottomed out on that parameter. So I'm gonna hit save, All right? So there goes my flashing light. So now this thing's pretty, pretty well, real balanced, right? And you know, I might be able to play around with that by moving this camera around a little bit more. You know, there might be some balance that I can do with the camera to get that thing to um, play a little nicer. So I'll play around with that later, but right now I'm, I'm happy with this. This is great. I can like, Move this thing around, come around like that, you know, my tilt, pan, all that stuff is just buttery smooth. And you know, that's, that's what I'm looking for, is just to do some video like that. So at this point, I went out um, to the park. I was taking my kid to the park and I brought it with me. Um, and uh, I just snapped some footage. Um, that's about all the footage I've taken. And I'll show that right here. No? I Jack, 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 don't get your feet wet. Come on, don't get your feet wet. Yeah, you don't want to get your feet wet. Don't play this. Is this? Don't play. Okay. Yeah, is it a fun day? So, really nice footage. I kind of liked the way it, um, it, it, it felt, and um, it seemed really nice and smooth to me. Um, better than anything I could have taken otherwise. But sometimes when I turn it on, it gets in a state where the camera is like this, right? Which again, isn't that useful to me because I'm, I'm taking a picture of a, of a, a gimbal. Um, when it does that, I usually just take and manually move it. And so the other thing is, is this button acts as like a a, um, a function switcher, right? And so um, there is one, two, three functions, I think. So um, let's see, single tap switch between pan in mode and lock mode. 
So this is pan in mode. So notice, like when I tilt it, it pans for me, right? And let me just go ahead and um, turn this camera on. One button. Turn this camera on. And I'll take some video that you can actually see while I'm doing this thing, right? And so, the pan in mode, right? It pans. Um, and so that's kind of cool, right? So even like this. So you can pan around, and it'll slowly go. So you don't get this jerky, like, if you ever given your wife, well, sorry, my wife. If I give my wife a camera, um, usually it's just, like, all over the place, right? It's hard to watch and um, the video from. And so with this, it, it kind of slows that down. I haven't found that there's any setting to make that slower or faster. Um, so, you know, there it is that. Um, you hit it again, and it goes into lock mode. And so with that, there's no pan, right? So it's always set to just hold that position. And so that's kind of cool if you want to. There's a little jiggle in there. Um, if you want to hold it in that position, you know, that's always cool. So that's one, one, one tap, right? So, and if you go tap it again, it goes back, right? So you can pan. Cool. Um, double tap. Um, pan in and tilt in mode. Under pan and tilt mode, single tap to switch to lock mode. So double tap, I go one, two. Now I can look down and look up. Look down and look up. So this this is really nice. You know, it's, it allows you to kind of look around the scene, see what this room really looks like. You kind of just look around in a nice controlled manner so it doesn't, you can't get a hold of the camera, you get overexcited, whatever you're looking at. The, um, the gimbal kind of takes care of that and makes it smooth for you. So that's really cool. Um, to get out of that, again, you single tap. And now we're in lock mode. We want to go back to pan, uh, pan in mode. Hit the button. So that's three different modes there. And then the other thing that you can do is if you triple tap it, it will do a um, it will do a 180 degree. So say I want to do a selfie of myself right now, right? I can go one, two, three. There I am. Ha ha. Hello, hello. So um, hi. Um, and then triple tap again, one, two, three, and there we are. Um, sorry for my kid's mess over here, we're in the process of building a robot. You weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> or me, or me, no one wants to see my mug. Um, so, so, so that, at this point I was like, woohoo, I've got, I've got a, a gimbal, a stabilizing gimbal that I can use when I go to Disney. Um, if they let me in the park with this, because they do have like a no, um, no selfie stick policy. I don't know if this is considered a selfie stick or not. Um, so, but just awesome. I really like it. It, it feels really good. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the video now, movie. And um, turn off the camera. So with that, I was like, I was like, yes, this is gonna work. Um, and I can turn off the, the stick itself. Red, solid red, it's off. All right. Um, so I'm happy. I'm keeping it. Well, yay! Cool. So then I was, I was like, just sitting around and I'm thinking, you know, I've seen a lot of people that are upgrading the um, the firmware on these things, um, especially the the FIU, FAU, however you pronounce that. And um, I thought, oh man, from what I've read, you have to have a Windows machine, and then you have to get a driver. It's probably like some type of FTDI, what, what have you. I've played around with Arduino in the past. You know, ah, pain in the butt. And uh, so I went to their the the site, the FIU FAU download site. Um, F E I Y U FAU, and um, and found the driver, um, all that stuff. But then I saw that for this model, they actually have an Android app. So I was like, yes, score! Um, 
Android app. I have an Android phone. Um, that's cool. When I did, when I, after after installing that, I got this Fayu Fayu settings um, option here, and so I clicked that. And to my surprise, oh, it comes up. And just ignore this recently used when when you haven't used it, it doesn't come up with anything. And it gives you a few gimbals, right? The G5, the SPG, the SPG Live, SPG Plus. I'm assuming these are their their more current models. Um, MG V2 Lite is on there. Mine's the MG V2. I'm not sure if it's light or not, but um, I thought, cool, there's the MG V2. Um, that's the one I want. And if you press it, it says select a device, scan it for devices. I'm going to press cancel. Um, at this point, I was like, yeah, what, what do I do? So I hit help. And help, in this case, was actually somewhat helpful. Um, you know, it says download and install the app. Activate Bluetooth on your phone. Um, power on gimbal and stare at the LED indicator. I love that. Power it on and stare at the LED indicator. <laughs> if the LED indicator lights up with red and then turns to green, you can connect the app, the gimbal, directly. If, however, I threw that in there for a fact. If the LED indicator lights up with blue and then turns green, so if it goes to blue first after being red and then goes to green, you need to switch the gimbal's Bluetooth mode to connect the, with the app. Instructions as follows. I was like, please, please, Lord, don't make me go through that to switch on the Bluetooth and some gimbal. And so um, at that point, I was like, okay, well, let's just see. You know, let's press the button. So I pressed the button, got red, green, yes, we've got Bluetooth, right? And so, um, so the gimbal's on, and get out of this help. At this point, I'm like, please, just work. And the, lo and behold, there's the device it found, right? So this thing has Bluetooth in it. I didn't even realize that when I bought this thing. Um, I thought I was gonna have to buy one of those stupid remote control things. I was even looking at them on, on Amazon, getting ready to order one for like 30 bucks. So, um, so then I was like, whoa, cool, look at this. How cool is this? I have pan, tilt, lock, standby, re reverse, reset options on this thing. How cool is that? Um, and so I was like immediately drawn to this this um, this uh, joystick here, right? And so I was like, oh, I can pull that over, but the camera didn't do anything. It's like, what's up with that? I hold it there, and <laughs> notice that delay. It actually moved. It moved, um, but it was like it was like maybe one, two, three, three second delay. And, and it, it kind of, like, you hold it, and you're like, does it still move? How long should I hold it there for? And then it does move. And, hey, I held it the right amount of time for it to go center. And so, you know, maybe that'll get fixed when I update the firmware. Who knows? Um, so that got me thinking, like, can I update the firmware with this, right? So right now it says pan in. Um, so is that the mode that it's in, maybe? And then if I go to pan tilt, is it going to switch the mode? Um, it didn't appear to switch the mode, right? No, so that doesn't appear to be working in this, right? So I'm like, oh, right, there it switched it. So there's definitely like a delay in this app. So, um, oh, and I never, I never did show you the controls on this, like the, the joystick, right? So you can, you can use this joystick to move this stuff around. You don't have to like hold a phone to control it. The joystick's much more elegant. Um, so I like switch it, it goes back to where it was, and then it goes back to there, and then it's set, right? And so, um, so it works somewhat, it's just a little bit of a delay in there, which, you know, maybe that might be something they can actually work out, right? It does show you the battery status, that's kind of cool, because um, otherwise, how do you know where the battery's at? And um, then if you go to settings, you have motor settings in here, which... Yep, so look at that tilt axis. Remember I thought I had the tilt set at the max? And sure, sure enough, it's set at negative 100. Panning axis is at zero. My roll axis is at negative 25. So um, I'm not sure if you can actually set those things. Yeah, look, you can actually set those things in here. Which that's kind of cool. That's really cool. So you don't actually have to use the, um, the button press, bump, 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 to bump it around. Um, although, you know, 
that's kind of cool too. Once you once you do it, it's not a it's not really a big deal. So um, I'm gonna put that down because my hands getting my hands fatigue in there. Um, and so um, so yeah, that that's cool. Um, the following sentence, ah, look at this. Check this out. So remember what I was saying like there's no way to change that that speed at which it pans. You know, I bet following speed, which is set at 80, would change that around. A dead zone. 10? You know, who knows what that is? Um, joystick gimbal? Look, you can change the speed at which it pitches and yaws. Um, invert the pitch direction. Invert the yaw direction. Why not? You know, who knows? Who knows what kind of uses you can find for that if you're holding the joystick in the other direction, right? And then um, um, auto update app. So you can update this app on, the, on I, I assume, on my device. And then reset all settings, right? So, um, that's what I actually use to get it back to show you um, how to how to you know, level everything, balance everything out. So the other cool thing that I noticed on this is there's this update button, and I was like, "Ooh, does this update the firmware on the gimbal?" Look at that. Check in whether there is a new version. And lo and behold, the firmware is the latest version. Don't need to update. Yes, that's awesome. But it's equally awesome that I can just hit that button and update the firmware on this, on this gimbal from my phone. I'm sold. This thing's awesome. It's staying in my arsenal. Um, I like it. I hope those wires don't get snagged on anything. And I'm going to be very careful with those. They seem like the weak link in this whole setup. Um, other than that, everything's pretty tight. So um, with that said, I'll go ahead and just play with these... Um, these other mounting options because I haven't really played with that stuff yet and um, just show you what, kind of what that stuff looks like all right cool let's put this phone down all right guys so um so as I said I'm just going to show you these um these other options for mounting this camera um here's a little uh micro mini whatever usb no, the, not the latest the latest is what those um USB C's or whatever that is, but um, probably have a hundred of these things sitting around. And then this is a little like 90 degree thing. This like clips onto the battery part, so like right here, and then allows you to put the battery stick going down, which is kind of cool. Um, this here appears to be a grip because it's nice and rubbery, feels good. It's got a little clamp here. Got two of those. And then this is like this lightweight, um, I'm assuming like an extension, because it's so lightweight, it doesn't have grip on it. And you got two of those, right? And so that's what you get in this thing. Otherwise, you've got an empty box, and spare set of batteries. Um, so for this thing, um, I've, never, I've never done this. I've never screwed in any of these parts before. So um, this is a first for me too, basically. You just unscrew this. So I got the handle. Um, inside the handle are those batteries, right? So we've got the two batteries. Um, you've got an extra set. They appear to be both the same size. Um, so numbers are the same on them. So, yep, yeah, you have two sets. You charge one while you've got the other one going. And so I'll slide these in with the, the male side, whatever. Yeah, positive side being up. And um, for this, I'll go ahead and put this 90 degree on here, right? Try this out. So, screws on nice. It's easy. And then I'll take this here. And that should screw on there, right? There we go. Um, I'll go ahead and push the button. Kind of where it needs to be. Find if you just kind of push it where you want it, it'll start up the way the proper way. And push the button down. And there we go. Um, let's see. I want this to be turned like that. So I just use the joystick, and now I can handle this thing down low or up high. Depends on how you want it. Um, but it gives you a nice grip. 
And this actually feels nice. Um, it's definitely less, um, less easier. And it kind of holds it out from your hand so you're not like underneath it or above it. Um, trying to grip this, this thing from above. It's a lot more firm, like, 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 like if I was in an action situation, running perhaps, this would be awesome. Like, like it feels good. I can hold this a lot longer, more steady, without the fear of dropping this thing. Um, right there, do you notice it's kind of like um, it's angled? It appears. Yeah. Maybe it's just like horizontal stuff, it seems to. But it's really cool. It's fun to play around with this thing. It's freaking awesome. Um, so there's that, right? And then, um, so these these other things, right? So they, I, I assume, go on here. So we have a handle going off the side there. And then, we have a handle going off this side. Again, these handles, they don't have any grip or anything on them. They don't feel like, but you, know, you want bicycle types that grip, there you go. Um, you can hold it like that, or you can hold it like this. Okay? Um, very cool. So that gives you a little bit like more control, like kind of bicycle, you're driving a bicycle. Um, feels good. Then you got these guys here, right? Like so you want the you want the control. You want to have all control. So we're gonna go ahead and mount these things. Again, this is the first time I've played around with these things. I'm by far not a professional at all. Um, not at all. So I don't know how this is actually is supposed to go. How a professional would use this. But you tighten it, and that's that's nice. That is nice. That's like the jo the, 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 the firmness of holding this thing, but the ease of like, this is like driving a car versus driving a bike. It's just like laid back, nice and easy. Right? If you were doing a film, I can imagine this would be like the way to go. Because you can just get in there and just kind of walk around. Don't really worry too much. You can move it in, move it out. Move it in, move it out. I still get a little bit of vibration when I go. Like certain tilts. I'm going to play around with the camera, I think, a little bit. But overall, I'm happy with this thing. And I am happy that I can mount much more stuff onto this, right? So I've got plenty of room here for, say, a microphone, my flash, um, not that I use flash for videos, uh, my GoPro, you know, to be able to put a GoPro on there is pretty freaking awesome to, um, to have two, two cameras running at the same time with a different, um, different perspective, perhaps focus could be very interesting to use for that. So I'm, I'm happy with this thing, man. I'm going to take some awesome shots with my kid with this thing. This is um, you know, movie time. I'm stepping it up from millions of pictures to, um, to movies now. Um, next thing you know, I'll have to get a 4K camera. But um, that's it for now. I hope um, I was helpful with this video. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Let me know. Let me know what you want me to do with this thing. Um, tell me how to use it properly. Um, tell me I'm an idiot. Whatever. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.